we go to the house? I want a big, you know, I'm sorry, and I'm a piece of shit for men when I prove it innocent. I'm innocent! Karma is out there. Yeah. And I always say that people who do bad things suffer with their own being every day. What's up, y'all? It's Ryan Keith, and I'm back with another video. And today, we'll be looking at the finale of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, season three. And I had so much hope for this franchise, um, especially with the Jen situation that's going on. Um, I'm not gonna say the, the series so far is like over or it's like, okay, I don't wanna watch the series again because I still get enjoyment out of it. But it's one of the things where I just feel like, Molly, you in danger. The people that we liked or the people that we thought brought the show to where it's at are gone. Mary and Jen. Those were the two people that really brought the show to where it's at. I would actually throw in um, Lisa Barlow too. Um, so I feel like she has a lot of fans and people like watching her. So I feel like, you know, those three really brought this show to where it's at. So they really got to do something because this episode was already weird. <laughs> they cut out a lot of stuff. And, but you know what? We're gonna get into it, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. How did in the fire come out? I'm a famous lips. You wanna play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it. One is securing the bag. All right, so I'm under the weather right now. Um, so don't mind my voice, but you know, I'm still going to do what I gotta do. Hey, I would say I'm happy that I got sick now than when I had to get on the airplane and fly to Seattle for work. So I, I, I'll take it for right now. But let's get into the video. So the way that this season in, ended right now for me is upsetting just because I feel like, you know, Jen with her sentencing and her basically pleading guilty and all this being unraveled. It's just like I really feel like this season really could have the way it ended could have been better. I feel like the last couple episodes focusing on Heather's black eye. I don't know what for. I feel like it should have been a 15 minute situation where it's like, oh my God, Heather, who did your eye? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, cool. On to the next. Like, we spent too much time on something that we still don't know about, right? So, we see Heather, she's planning her party for the cover reveal for her book, Bad Mormon. And we jump over to Whitney's house. She's talked to her husband, saying that, you know, I'm dropping out of Heather's choir and I just feel like we're not really on a great page. So, why am I going to just sit here and still be in her choir? um side note um like i said before these these, these the first 30 minutes of the episode seem very rushed um it's like they're speeding by just to get to jen's court stuff at the end and i'm just like i mean at this point we really didn't need it because to be honest we already knew what happened with her <laughs> it was covered all over the news like we already knew she going to jail so for them just to cut like i don't i feel like it was a choice because like it wasn't a surprise to us for us to be like, oh my God, no, Jen's going to jail. Oh my God, we already know. So, so everyone is um, flowing in. Lisa greets Heather and she noticed that her black eye has, has healed and Heather doesn't want people to keep bringing it up. But like Lisa says, it's just like, you don't, want, you don't want people to keep bringing your black eye up, but you still make it a topic of conversation by not saying what happened, who did it to you, or did you do it to yourself? So she's making it a topic of conversation by her just avoiding or um, alluding to certain things and avoiding the question. So Angie comes in and she pulls Whitney and Lisa to the side and she's like, yeah, you know, Jen is over here telling people that I punched her and she's just a low class person. I don't want anything to do with Jen. Jen is putting out there to people and suggesting that I'm the one that's responsible for her eye. That's ludicrous. And, you know, Angie started alluding to the fact that Heather and Jen might have been, you know, scissoring <laughs> on the trip and, you know, things just went to the south and Jen punched her in her eye. So that's what Jen, um, Angie is saying. But he's saying that perhaps her and Heather were in their room doing Barbara's scissor kicks and then Jen beat the shit out of her. So in the middle of their conversation, Jen walks in with Coach Shaw and, you know, Jen's looking gorgeous. Um, she shows up, she heads over to Angie H and her husband and, you know, they have a conversation and, you know, they do all the formalities like, hey, boo, how you doing? Oh, my God. Hey, girl. Yeah. So they do all of that. And then Coach Shaw, he um, basically tells um, Angie and her husband, like, I want an apology. Like, y'all have did a lot of despicable stuff with this whole um, Instagram account, Shaw Exposed. So he's like, I want y'all to, you know, be held accountable and, you know, apologize to me and my wife. So Angie's husband starts to apologize. And he was like, yeah, you know, what I did was... <sighs> Sorry. 
I think we're stops mid-sentence trying to really give off an effect that he feels so so remorseful and trying to cry and i didn't buy it i'm just like sir bump all of that you could just, and it took for angie to step in and like you know my husband never do something like that that's not in his character he would never no it isn't his character because he did it and yes if he was going off retaliation this that and the third cool but you were targeting lisa but you went after Jen, it still doesn't make sense to me. So for him to try to explain, like, oh my god, you know, I I apologize. He couldn't even say that. Like literally, Coach Shaw was just like, yeah, I get what you're saying, man. I get it. They start hugging. Jen start hugging Angie. Um, H. I'm just like, what is going on? Thank you, and I accept your apology. Thank you. Ah. Really. So we go outside and we see the choir is singing and the they basically start singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> and it's cute, but it's flat. Very flat. Um, and you know, um Lisa, I've I've grown to like Lisa. Um I feel like her isms are pretty funny to me. I know a lot of people can't stand Lisa Barlow. I don't mind her, even with Meredith. I don't mind Meredith. I actually enjoy both of them on my screen in their feud. I actually enjoy it, so I'm like, eh. But, you know, we did not see Heather, um, after everybody sings, they make their, um, Heather makes her speech, and she's, you know, thanking these people, you know, her journey um, about being a Mormon and how she got out of Mormonism and you know she's discovering the woman that she is outside of her religion she reveals the cover um, uh, for her book Bad Mormon and you know Hella looks great I feel like her book is doing well I don't know if it's a um, New York bestseller but you know still you know congratulations to her to put that body workout we already know how hard it was for her to do that because of the backlash that she got with her family and you know with with that I feel like one thing I could really like touch on is the fact that a lot of people, I feel like we stunt our growth or we don't do certain things because of how our family or how other people will think of us. But I feel like it's not their truth, it's our truth. So it's like, regardless of whatever anybody's going to think or say, I feel like we have, we have a duty to ourselves to put our own stories out. So I respect Heather for putting her story out, regardless of if it hurt people's feelings or not, because that's her truth and that's just what she went through. So I can't be mad at her at all. So while everybody's on here mingling around, Whitney and Jen, you know, they go over and they talk to each other. And Whitney basically tells Jen about how she feels about the relationship and how they, how Whitney feels that they left off San Diego. And Jen was like, you know, um, I definitely didn't think, think that we're in a bad place. I thought everything was fine on my part. I thought everything was good. And Whitney was like, yeah, you know, it really wasn't. I feel like there's a lot of things that were said. And I kind of agree with Whitney just because Jen was really bugging through on a lot of people and throughout the whole entire trip. Like the situation with Angie K, I thought that was wrong. The way she was pushing on Lisa, I thought that was wrong. The way she over here spazzing out um, and basically lying to um, Angie K when she was like, oh, yeah, I pay for Angie K basically accused Jen for not paying her back. And Jen was like, I know you're lying. But last episode, Coach Shaw brought a check. So, I mean, I guess she wasn't lying. But, you know, all the other girls see this. And Dana, Angie, Lisa, and Meredith all come over to witness the convo. And at this point, Angie K is basically inserting herself while Jen is trying to speak. And to me, it feels like it's a gang up at this point. And I'm just like, we don't get Jen calm many of times right we don't get the calm gym so when jen's over here trying to actually explain herself and take accountability angie you're over here inserting yourself and say well you know you accuse people you told people that i punch you in the eye da, 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 blah, 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 blah. This you are going around spreading rumors that i gave heather a black eye you went told and for me i just felt like it was unnecessary it felt very thirsty for Angie K to basically bombard Jen at this point and like I'm giving her grace because regardless of the fact like I'm just going off of what is going on right now 
she bombarded Jen about the whole, oh, you telling people I, I punched you in the eye. And mind you, she didn't tell us who told her that. She just said someone said that. And it could have been made up. We don't know. And Angie is very thirsty at this point. So she could have made that up plenty of times. So Jen said she didn't say that. But, you know, she, she didn't let it go. And at this point is when they cut out the whole argument with Dana. If I were you, I'd be real nice right now, especially if you want some money in your books. <gasps> We still don't know what the argument's about. Dana, you liked one of my comments on Twitter. Baby, please, please explain why. Please explain why you said that because I still want to know. Um, they edited that out of the whole entire show. For them to just be like, oh, let's keep this out. Missed opportunity. When everything reaches the climax, Angie K then questions if Jen actually tried to commit side right is it even real like did she really push you to that or is it all fake and don't get me wrong like jen be lying we know this for a fact but at some point i don't know if she would even coach shaw came over and had to clarify that you know she wasn't lying he took her to the hospital and to me coach shaw has a little bit of credibility but for her to do that i was just like is it that deep like, you're that mad? Oh, okay. I just felt like she went too far. So, at this point, everybody is just like, <laughs> the producer is showing the final cards. And I'm just like, dang, it's only 27 minutes in. Like, y'all are showing the, the um, series final cards and everybody, what's everybody doing? I didn't read none of that because I'm like, it's 27 in. Like, what are we doing? But, you know, everything goes black. It skips to three months later. And we see Jen sitting outside with her mother and they talk about, you know, Jen's upcoming trial. She's about to go to New York and her mother's like, yeah, you know, you're, you're innocent. So it doesn't even matter. And I'm just like, Ooh, whoo. And she don't even know. I feel for Jen's mother because of, you know, she 100% believes that Jen is innocent. And not only that, she cashed out her retirement, a million dollars for Jen. Um, I, I think that it was a million dollars the total and I just feel so bad for her because as a parent I would have felt so lied to like yes I thought like as a parent with Jen what Jen should have did was regardless of the fact be honest with Sharif and be honest with your mother and just be like boom this is what it is I'm gonna try to get out of it I'm gonna try to lie to the system job but obviously, like everybody said, if the federal government is after you, there's, I don't see, they coming after you because they got facts. So, you know, it is what it is though. But you know, then the producer starts showing flashbacks in the flashbacks of her journey with this trial, all the way from the SWAT team to them coming to her house, to her over here proclaiming her innocence, for her over here yelling at people saying she's innocent. And for the fact that she not only pleaded guilty, changing her plea from non -gu not guilty to guilty. But I just feel like it was wild because you, she took money, almost nine million, or I think nine to six, 16 million dollars from elderly people. And she lied to them, she coerced them to sign up for these programs or these packages that didn't have any type of value. And it was, it's just kind of sick because to think that somebody would take advantage of my grandmother would be infuriating. So I can give her empathy because of her family, but Jen, karma came around and you got what you got, girl. Um, So we see the girls in New York, um, Meredith and Heather, they show up for Jen and Heather tells Meredith that Jen and her had a deep combo before they went and Jen basically told her, like, you know, if the worst comes the worst, what you do, if worst comes the worst, you know, can you please check up on my family and this and the third, um, if she like found guilty. So the girls head, head over to Jen's room and they basically sit down, they greet Coach Shaw and, you know, Coach Shaw, the way he's talking, it gives me that he knows something and I th forgot because, you know, Heather brought it up, like Coach Shaw was an attorney before he was a head coach or assistant coach for a football team. So I was like, okay, he's a, he was an attorney. So, I mean, he knows the in and outs of the court system. So I'm trying to figure out, like, he could have given her no legal advice. He didn't give her nothing. We're going to be fine. We want a certain outcome, but regardless, God is with us. I know that we'll be fine. 
Like, it just seems kind of weird. It, it feels like Coach Shaw is definitely, the way he's talking, he's sitting on some information. But I don't want, that's just alleged. Then we segue over to Heather, Meredith, and Seth. They all go out to lunch, and they're all talking about Jen's trial and Jen's involvement. And they believe she wasn't involved at all because, quote, unquote, they believe there's no evidence against Jen. And, um, like I said, little do they know. Seth asked the million dollar question. Have you ever asked Jen if she's guilty of any of these charges? Meredith, Heather, do you believe that Jen is guilty? Have you asked her, did she do these things? So they're like, yeah, you know, I haven't asked her. Heather right at this point sounds crazy. She's like, you believe the people that you love. Where that could be true, if there's facts, there's facts. And at that point, we heard the facts before she even changed her plea. So they saw the, the stuff that went out, but they choose to say that there was no evidence. There was plenty of evidence, even when the SWAT team came and got her. So it just sounds crazy for me, for Heather just be like, well, you know, believe the people that you love, girl, bye. And then Meredith was just like, and I feel like I agree with Meredith, was just like, I didn't ask her anything because I don't want to over here have to be sequestered for questioning at all. So I was actually on Heather's, um, with Meredith on that. So we see Jen talking to the girls about, you know, Stuart playing her. No, bitch, you're an evil mother and you played me. I would not be in this thing at all if it wasn't for Stuart. It's just crazy because they're like, yeah, you know, Stuart over here did this, Stuart did that. He, I trusted him and he just threw me under the bus and he over here did this and the third. It's like, but girl, you were the queen pin. You were the queen pin. So I'm just like, she's like, yeah, you know, Stuart did to get a less sentence. Hell yeah. I don't see anyone not trying to get themselves the less sentence in jail, especially if they weren't the head honcho. 50 people pleaded guilty and Jim was the only one left that was innocent. To me and with deductive reasoning, I would assume that Jen was the one that everybody was gunning for. Simple. Um, so Heather and Meredith is looking at Jen in silence while she's talking. <laughs> she's just going on. And then Meredith was just like, you know, she brings up the karma, Carmen. I'm just like, you know, the irony. Um, I feel that Stuart's confession and whatever Jen read was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because after that, on July 11th, Jen basically goes to the judge a, a day before her trial was set to start. And she pleaded guilty and confessed to all the crimes and which were basically conspiracy to commit wire fraud and yeah it's it's just very crazy to to see you know um we segue over a few days later lisa and heather meet at lunch what she put guilty to is so bad and this is the end of the episode and they talk about you know jen changing her plea to guilty and you know like i said before we see jen basically talking about her flashbacks her talk about her son you know my son omar he is not gonna i'm not gonna be there for his um his prom or his graduation from med school and all these other things and you know it's very sad i have empathy for her because those are milestones in kids lives and for her sons they would never get that back you know um yeah they'll be grad more graduations maybe but for her to miss almost six years and I believe that Jen has to do at least 85% of her sentence time if when this pertains to federal um, sentencing or federal prison or whatever. So it's just like, I feel for her, you know, I really do. But on the other hand, how and ever, what she did to these other families and we see the, like proof of like stories. Um, I think there was a video on Twitter of stories going around where the victims are telling them sto their stories and it's just disgusting how she got over these people period um then heather basically brings up you know i feel that jen did it you know lisa starts bawling her eyes out you know she's dramatic but you know coach shaw she says you know might know something heather basically feels that coach shaw probably coerced her to change the plea to guilty um maybe so we don't know that's something he's going to have to come out. A lot of people have been talking about what's the difference between Coach Shaw, Erica, and maybe even Phaedra. You know, all three of them have been in similar situations where they had their significant other, you know, go to jail and they basically stay out of jail while their other go into the slammer, right? Um, 
I don't feel like Coach Shaw had anything to do with it, but I can't, it's hard for me to believe that he didn't know anything. Because even when I was in relationships and stuff, I still knew that, okay, you know, they got paid because they work here. They got paid because of this. They got paid for her or that. If there's anything like flashy, like, oh my God, where you get this from? Oh, my parents bought it or da, 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 da. There's always a rhyme to the reason, you know? So for Jen just to have this lavish lifestyle and <clears throat> Coach Sean, her been together for so long, there had to be a period of time where she just, boom, had a lot of money. And did he not question it? It's just a lot of things that are left unsaid. And I want to know. That's the reason why I want this series to come back for season four, because I still want to follow the lives of these women. I'm still invested heavily, and I just want the fake and the frauds storylines and the contriveness to go away from this franchise. I feel like this franchise can really turn it around on season four, but this season started out so good that I just feel disrespected by production. How dare you, you beast. <laughs> But no, I'm just joking. But, you know, you guys, let me know what you guys think. You know, Jen is going to jail. She's been sentenced for to six and a half years in prison with five years when she get out, supervised, um, supervised probation. So let me know what you guys think. That's Salt Lake. That's the finale. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.